Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy here for the Daily Blob, where I shake my brain nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks hands-on, in-person technology education in Durham, North Carolina. Silicon Dojo, siliconDojo.com. We have a class on AI and web scraping coming up on November 19th. If you're interested to take a look at the classes we have, uh, go to siliconDojo.com. Do remember, free to the user is not free. That's why I keep shaking these brain nips. Uh, if you want to throw some money into the donor box link, there's a donor box link down below. Uh, and with that, um, let's get into me screaming about how much I hate AI. Have you heard lately that I really don't like AI? <laughs> have, have you gotten the impression from my rants that AI might be pissing me off? I don't know. I don't know. Some of the folks out there watching these videos might not fully understand the context. They might not be able to read between the lines of the things that I'm saying to realize how fucking much I hate AI at this point in time. So anyways, as I've said before, it's not really AI. LLMs are wonderful. <laughs> LLMs are wonderful. Neural networks are wonderful. Transformers are wonderful. What was it Mamba? Mamba is the new thing. I guess it's wonderful. I need to learn more about Mamba. Rag is one. All this kind of stuff is wonderful. Uh, the problem is the Sam Altmans of the world, right? AI, LL, all this. It's a fine stack. It's a fine stack. It is just a stack. The problem is, is the massive amount of investment going into this AI idiocy, because as I've said before, it just doesn't actually make sense, right? One of the things that I've said, you know, the whole idea of you need to constantly run everything through the LLM, right? So if you have an LLM, LLMs burn a tremendous amount of resources. You know what doesn't? Databases. <laughs> Databases are incredibly uh, resource efficient. Uh, LLMs are incredibly resource inefficient, just how they are. So one of the things to ask yourself if you're going to be building out an architecture and you actually care about resource utilization is do you want to constantly be sending every query to an LLM uh, to get a response when that's going to be high resource consumption or do you want to send a query to an LLM have the LLM figure out how to create something like a SQL statement going into the future, and in the future, when that query comes in, it just gets bounced to a SQL statement on your database instead of going to the LLM. Like, wouldn't that make a little bit of sense? <laughs> wouldn't that make a little bit of sense? Yeah, yeah, that would make a little bit of sense. But anyways, we're not in that world, right? Sam Altman, Sam Altman wants all the money. He currently is trying to invest $1.4 trillion into CapEx expenses just for open AI. That doesn't include XAI, doesn't include Anthropic, doesn't include all of the other things that are going on, right? Uh, $300 billion contract he's already signed uh, for Oracle. A massive contract signed with, with Microsoft and with, with Google and all of these other companies, right? And the idea is buy more, 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 more. Well, when you hear about this, right, you hear about the GPU shortage. Right, and it's very easy to get a little tunnel vision. I, again, I get a little tunnel vision on some of this stuff because you're just not thinking about. It. Like, again, I don't care that much about AI. When I like, so a lot of people are like, well, if you're doing SiliconDojo.com, if you're doing AI classes, what do you mean you don't like AI? Like, it, it's it's AI washing. I, I'm teaching you stacks. I'm teaching you function calls. I'm teaching you API calls. I'm teaching you SQL statements. I'm teaching you that type of stuff. Architecture. With, with a, a just sweet, just, just a taste of artificial intelligence there, right? Like we're doing web scraping, we're teaching web scraping uh, with an AI component to the web scraping, you know, that type of thing. But anyway, so I don't, I don't think about this whole, the consequences of this AI uh, a lot just because, again, it's, most of it's stupid. Like, like just, just, just brass fucking tax. Most of this is dip shittery stupid. But anyways, right? So they talk about they talk about the AI build out, and so you think about people's electricity bills are going up, right? So Mark Zuckerberg can make a little bit more blood money. Your electricity bills are gonna go through the roof, right? You know, so uh, so somebody else, you know, can can make more money. You're gonna not gonna have enough water. Putting data centers and things in places like Arizona where there's not enough water to begin with, and they just you consume it just a tremendous amount of water, right? Like you hear about those things, right? So it's like GPUs and it's electricity and it's like water. Look, it is what it is. It is what it is. But here's the funny thing. You know what you need with GPUs? <laughs> Again, for all, of our, for all of our politicians out there, you know a GPU isn't like really a finished product. 
a GPU itself is just simply a component or a, 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 a graphics card. The card is simply a component that has to go into something else, right? It has to go into a computer. And you know, that computer, I mean, it needs motherboards, obviously. And I guess it needs a power supply, obviously. And it needs a computer case, obviously. And, uh, oh yeah, and it needs RAM. It needs RAM. And it needs hard drives, storage. Yeah, so, uh, so the thing that I wasn't realizing is just how much AI is hammering all of the other components within the computer. Not simply the $40,000 graphics card that's going to go in there but, and the CPU, but then you also need the RAM, right? We've talked about that before. I did a video before. RAM prices up are, like by, are up by like 200%. A lot of the companies producing RAM literally are maxing out at 100% uh, of their capacity simply again 1.4 trillion dollars in capex expenses is a hell of a lot of sticks of ram the other thing that's curious again i just honestly just hadn't crossed my mind is story right hard drives uh so i'm coming from tom's hardware hard drives on back order for two years as AI data centers trigger uh, hard drive shortages, delays forcing rapid transition to QLC SSDs. But as people then, as AI then goes to SSDs, it's causing backlogs, backlogs in SSDs too. So if you want a hard drive, oh, so if you want electricity, if you want water, if you want RAM, if you want a hard drive, guess what? Get in line, AI has got to take it all first. And so this is kind of an interesting thing to be thinking about with, uh, with how you run your business as a decision maker, right? I talked about this before, like when the, with the, the Thailand floods. So I had gone back to consulting for a little while. Uh, I think it was like 2011, 2012. Uh, basically, so the first, the first iteration of my video classes and all that didn't work out. It was like a normal startup company, just didn't work, right? So before, you, before I took off on YouTube, I went back to consulting. Anyways, you know, we bought our hard drives, didn't think much about it, right? You need hard drives, you go to Newegg, you buy hard drives, no big deal. Uh, there was a flood in Thailand. And if you were like me, again, we talk about domino, dominoes falling, many of these stories. Anyways, there was a flood in Thailand. Oh, poor Thai people, poor Thai people, right? I've been to Thailand. Thailand is full of really nice people. I should never go back, get, back again. The next time I go back to th Thailand, I will probably die. I got beat to death my first time to Thailand. Went back to Thailand in like 2016. Uh, got a cellulite, was it cellulitis? Anyways, I got this horrible infection in my foot. My foot like swelled up like that big last time I went to Thailand. I'm never going to go back to Thailand again. Next time I go back to Thailand is a death sentence. Anyways, otherwise, great people, lovely country, really fucking sad that a uh, flood uh, hammered Thailand. But for me in the United States, who the hell cares? Well, apparently at the time they produced something like 50% of all the hard drives in the world. <laughs> Literally no clue. Like you just do not, you do not understand the supply chain <laughs> until it falls apart. Yeah, so all of these uh, these hard drive flat factories had just been flooded the fuck out. And so all of a sudden, hard drives go for some, from something that was incredibly easy to get, get a hold of, very inexpensively, to hard to get a hold of, and exceedingly expensive. One of the things that I found in order to get through uh, the time period is I started ransacking Best Buys. So the curious thing like with pricing, right, is if you go to a physical retail store, they slap a sticker on the, on the product and they put it on the shelf. And basically, they don't change the sticker on the product until they get a new, new shipment or whatever else in. So as hard drive prices were going through the roof, the cool part was I could go to Best Buys and I would just grab every hard drive they had because I could buy it for t literally like 25% of the price of what was on Newegg at the time because there were just no, no hard drives available. And so one of the things to be thinking about with this whole AI disaster, if you're actually a technology decision maker, right? You're a manager, you're a CIO, a CTO, that type of thing. One of the things that you have to start thinking about is with this AI tsunami, are you going to be able to continue getting access to the hardware that you have gotten very used to being able to get access to? And if you can't, what does that mean? Does that mean pushing out refresh cycles? Does that mean uh, back ordering and having your own inventory of hardware uh, and equipment? Does that mean you do more repair, like in-house repair or whatever than you would before? I think this is something that a lot of folks are really going to have to start considering because, I mean, think about this. You're like, Sam Altman 
when you start talking about a 1.4 trillion dollar you know in capex that's a tremendous amount of computer hardware and the other thing to realize with this is when i talk about the ai bubble i'm not the only one out there talking about the ai bubble especially now a lot of other people are talking about the ai bubbles so for a lot of these vendors a lot of the manufacturers a lot of the vendors they have to be careful because you know a lot of people would think in a, in a normal economy right if you're selling more product then you should ramp up that the amount of product you can sell so you can gain more of the value there right more profit but the problem is is if this is a bubble or if trump's policies go the way most of us think they're going to go or whatever else we could, we could also have an economic collapse so the last thing you want to do as a business is you don't want to invest into an economic collapse Right, because if, if you already have factories, if you already have factories, you already have the loans, it's already been purchased, it's already been amortized, all of that kind of stuff. So if you're selling it at 100%, you're making all the profit. If everything goes to hell, it's not like you could have a smaller factory anyway, so you don't, you don't functionally lose a lot there. Whereas if you grow, if you double the size of your factory, and then a month later, we go into a depression, you just literally invested into a depression. And so I think that's going to be one of the big things to, to be looking at is for a lot of the, this technology hardware is looking at how accessible it is going to be uh, over the next few years. You know, when we talk about the, this AI bubble popping, is it going to pop? Yes, I can guarantee you the fucker is going to pop. It just it does not make any sense. But like with a lot of this stuff, the, the issue is in the timing, right? Timing is everything. Is it going to pop in six months? Is it going to pop in a year? Is it going to pop in three years? I don't know, is, is it going to pop, you know, uh, by the time Sam Allen puts a trillion dollars into this or is it going to pop by the time he puts four trillion dollars into this? And that's, that's going to be one of the, the hard parts with dealing with this whole crap show. Anyways, the race to achieve artificial general intelligence is dumb, it's stupid. <laughs> Anyways, has pushed constituents to invest in and build data centers at a pace far outstripping our ability to make them. Manufacturers are stru struggling to keep up with AI demand and the ongoing DRAM shortage is proof of this. With memory kits costing more than double what they did just a few months ago, now Digitimes is, uh, Digitimes is reporting that storage is taking a hit too, with delivery times for enterprise grade hard drives delayed by two years. Can you fucking imagine that you're you're trying to plan a new project and you have to think about ordering hard drives two years in advance lordy uh, that means if a firm wants to buy large capacity hard drives the backbone of near line storage it has to wait 24 months due to long lead times as the news cycle suggests ai money doesn't wait for anyone so hyperscalers are now switching to qlc nand based ssds to avoid these back orders picking qlc over tlc allows them to maintain costs while achieving sufficient endurance for cold storage however holding hoarding qlc nand uh, creates its own shortage since every cloud provider in north america and china is now lining up to buy it. This could lead to SSD prices rising worldwide as most value-oriented uh, models use QLC to save costs. In fact, Digitimes, Digitimes claims uh, that production capacity for QLC is completely booked through 2026 and some NAND at some NAND manufacturers. Uh, therefore, given the current situation, QLC NAND is expected to overtake TLC in popularity by early 2027, marking a significant shift in the storage landscape while enterprise-grade QLC SSDs would entirely power this pivot. SanDisk has already raised NAND prices by 50%, according to another Digitimes report, after initially warning of a 10% increase two months ago. Oh yeah, so tariffs, tariffs are just the first part of your problem, right? If you, if you are the tech decision maker at a company, you're already looking at insane, insane tariff rates and now the prices of the products are going through the roof too. And the curious thing with the tariffs is the tariffs aren't charged on what the original cost was. The tariffs are charged on whatever the current price is, right? So if a product costs you $100 and there's like a 50% tariff, you were spending $150. Thing is, if it goes up to $150, it's now 70, it's now $25 more in taxes. You're now spending $225. Right. Uh, every DRAM and NAND manufacturer is now selling capacity to AI uh, customers willing to pay the big bucks. Instead of having two to three months of buffer capacity, these firms are down to just a few weeks. This has led to year best numbers for many businesses, a sharp turnaround from a, two, a few years ago. But as usual, the short end of this uh, the stick trickles down to regular customers who are now entangled in yet another electronic scarcity problem. So, uh, so yeah, so, uh, so, uh, 
the Sam Altmans of the world, the Elon Musks of the world, the Natalas, the, the Nadellas of the world. Uh, yeah, they are going to be screwing you yet again. <laughs> yet again. Oh. Yeah, you're not you're not even going to be able to afford, uh, you know, when you're when you're poor and you don't have a job and all that, you're not even going to be able to afford to, to sit there and watch YouTube anymore. The electricity is going to be too expensive and you won't be able to buy a computer to be able to do it either. Um, so this this will actually be interesting to see um, how this goes over the next few years, uh, because, you know, again, like you, you hear these numbers and these numbers are idiotic, right? The, the trillions of dollars they're talking about putting into the, these projects, the 500 billion Stargate, like you hear those numbers and they're, they're just idiotic on the face of it. They're just so fundamentally stupid on the face of it. But, but there are practical ramifications to the stupidity, right? Just because it's dumb, just because it's rock stupid doesn't mean it doesn't in fact have real world consequences. And so it'll be curious to see what happens to the rest of the tech sector as essentially AI basically eats all the damn hardware. Right, and the other question to be thinking about too for a lot of these uh, these these hardware manufacturers is how much are they going to cons- care about the consumers uh, going forward? Right, so we've heard these complaints uh, about uh, Nvidia. Now to be clear, I'm not a big video gamer. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm right now. I'm playing my Switch too. I'm still playing Zelda. What the latest Zelda game is. That's my level of video gaming. So I don't really care about Nvidia graphics cards. I just don't. Right, never did. But I think one of the interesting things, if you watch Gamers Nexus, if you watch some of those other YouTube channels that actually care about kind of like gaming hardware, is one of the things that they've talked about, right? With the rise of AI, that NVIDIA is putting more and more focus on AI and less and less focus uh, on the gaming community that actually built, you know, made NVIDIA the company that it is today, right? And I think that's an interesting thing to be thinking about, right? So NVIDIA is chasing the money. Why, why try to sell a $300 uh, gaming Uh, graphics card uh, when you can sell a $40,000 AI graphics card, right? That That just makes complete sense. What will be interesting with the rest of the consumer world for technology is what happens as more and more of these hardware manufacturers, they just realize like they can get one customer, right? Sam, Sam Altman as a customer can provide them more profit than the rest of the United States combined. So, so, so how, how do they build out their manufacturing? How do they improve their manufacturing? What do they focus on? Do they focus on the guy spending one point, you know, five trillion dollars, or do they focus on all these yahoos trying to trying to spend fifty dollars here, hundred dollars there, two hundred dollars the other place? So the other thing to be thinking about with this is overall how this just might massively, massively skew uh, the entire tech sector. So I'll be curious. I'll be curious to see what happens. As I've said before, you cannot you cannot fight macro forces, right? When a, when a flood takes out all the hard drive capacity of Thailand, you got to run to Best Buy and grab hard drives, right? When the AI tsunami comes in. And you got you got to figure out what that actually means for your company or organization. Again, with these companies and organizations, a lot of the young people don't realize is the individual price for things is pretty small. Like an extra fifty bucks, an extra hundred bucks. Who the hell cares? But right, if you got if you got a thousand if you got a thousand employees, right? If you got a thousand employees and you got a three year refresh cycle, if you know if every every computer they purchase is $1,000, you know, that's $300,000. It means you're spending essentially $100,000 a year refreshing computers, uh, right? Between, between tariffs, uh, between the, the increased prices and things and other stuff, right? If that, if that jacks up your, uh, your, your new cost by 25%, that means you're going from, you know, $100,000 a year to $125,000 a year. Overall, every three years, you're now spending $75,000 more. You might be spending $100,000 more, $200,000 more, right? That, those are real significant costs uh, that companies have to figure out what to do with, especially in this weird economic environment that, they, that we're, we are dealing with. So anyways, so what do you think about this? What do you think about hard drive shortages going out to two years for enterprise class of hard drives? And what do you think about AI now snapping up SSDs, which is causing a problem in the SSD market? Put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik. Make sure your uh, comment has, has thumbs the way our cows do and put that comment down there. Um, anyways, as you know, uh, Silicon Dash, 
pleasure. SiliconDojo.com is my real pride and joy. Free to Indies are hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class coming up on AI and web scraping coming up on November 19th. We have more classes coming down the pike. Go to SiliconDojo.com to see what our schedule is. Do remember Free to the Indies are is not actually free. That's why I'm shaking the brain nip nips. If you want to throw some money in, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.